to the hosts on The Daily Wire. Obviously, everyone was able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously, there was into a debate about whether The Daily Wire is pro free speech. The accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? We have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh, obviously, is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle What's going on, folks? I want to look at two clips today. The first one is Megyn Kelly asked Ben Shapiro if they have a free speech policy at Daily Wire for everything except for Israel. The clip is interesting, worth talking about, so we're going to play that and react Second thing I want to look at is uh, the Overton window comment. I mentioned it slightly in the last video, but Ben went on. I think it was Dave Rubin or, or somebody. And then he said, you know, there is a certain Overton window at the Daily Wire, of course, that you pretty much can't cross. Uh, what is that Overton window? We're going to look at it because I could show you it's not the First Amendment. It's not the Second Amendment. So it's important to know which lines not to cross in conservative media. And before I play my intro video, I just want to say, too, after five or six years of talking about this topic to no avail, there's finally some progress being made. And I wanted to mention that this is really how we get stuff done, including when it comes to Trump or the Republican Party. If we just play along looking like they're television characters and just cheering for one side or the other, nothing ever gets done. But when you voice your opinion, use your First Amendment as an American citizen to disagree and be a man or a woman or whatever and, and actually just tell these people like, no, that's wrong that's when they actually change their tune. If you just keep cheerleading on the two-party system, nothing's ever going to change. So I do have, I think, an important, bigger point to make here, but we'll make it as soon as the show starts. Give me a thumbs up in the comments if everything sounds good. Dream Rare Podcast starts now. It's the Dream Rare Podcast. Welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? In the comments, we got Dan, we got Wyatt, we got Ellis, Allison, we got Christ followers. She said, my my always Trumpers are so angry with me for telling the truth. Sorry to hear that. Spicy, Sarah, very spicy. I, I thought I ordered mild. Just kidding. It's a, it's a salsa joke. Anyway, um, I wanted to say this before I play these clips and get into the topic. You know, when it came to 2020, 2021, 2022, a lot of people just kind of went along with it and said, oh, the Republican Party's making a mistake or Donald Trump doesn't know what he's doing. And I always said the way to get real change is to stand firm and just tell him that you disagree. Like when Donald Trump kept going on stage and saying my vaccine's the greatest human achievement in ma of mankind and it saved 100 million lives. It's like if he knows that you don't care that much, he doesn't have to change his tune. But when enough Americans come together, I'm not asking you to hate him. And this is People are so their minds are so scrambled from the false left right paradigm or the Republican Democrat paradigm. They think if you if you challenge your party that you must be a rhino or you must be Joe Biden. And that's not really how it works at all. These politicians and people in the media, they're opportunists and they basically just play off of each other. Like, look at the left, look at the right. They fundraise off of each other. And the only way to get real change is to see through that and let these people know that you're not a pushover. If you act like a pushover and you're just like, oh, I guess I got to vote for them. And it's like, sure, go vote for them. But, you know, this uh, this theory that I've had for a long time, it's finally working with Matt Walsh, one of the biggest commentators in Republican media, finally addressing the hate speech laws. I did a whole video on it. I spent hours. I think it's my best journalistic piece of the year. It's my last video. If you haven't watched it, please do. Lots of people have. I appreciate it. But uh, I, that's the overarching point I want to make before I weigh in on these clips. I'm not doing this to be petty. It's just nothing really matters if your team is not your team. If Republican media is fake, if Republican politicians are controlled opposition, which they are, it's always going to be like you're almost at the one yard line and then you fumble right before the touchdown and you're like, oh, man, we almost made it. But it's really just a script. So let's get into this stuff. I have a lot to talk about. But the first one is it looks like Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro are doing damage control because everybody sees who they really are. And I guess they went to Megyn Kelly to ask the questions that people have been wondering for five, six years now. Thanks to Candace Owens getting firing, all these questions that were suppressed and covered up and called anti-Semitic for five, six years now, they're all coming to the surface. And I guess Megyn Kelly is the, you know, the, the chosen media parrot. And no, I'm just kidding. The chosen media lady to ask these questions to Ben. And um, 
I want to hear his answer real quick. I chopped it into three clips because I don't feel like getting a copyright strike. So here we go. Into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro free speech. The accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? We have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh, obviously, is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in. The I find it interesting that this is a line that uh, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring have been talking about recently. I'm going to play the other clips. But same thing that Jeremy Boring said, because Lauren Chen, if you guys remember, if not, you can go backtrack and watch some of the old videos if you want. Lauren Chen asked Jeremy Boring, the CEO of Daily Wire, in a Twitter space. She goes, can you think of a news host that goes further on Israel than your hosts go that isn't anti-Semitic? Because you keep calling everybody anti-Semitic. And he goes, well, Matt Walsh, they always refer to Matt Walsh. It's like, oh, it's 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 us. And then like, you know, the, Matt Walsh is like critical of Israel. It's like, not really, though. I mean, obviously, he has his opinions and he just made a video about the hate speech laws like a couple days ago for the first time in five years. But Lauren Chen pushed a little more and she goes, Matt Walsh doesn't count. I mean, he doesn't really say much. That's fine. But can you name one person? And they never can. It's like in their heads, they think everyone is anti-Semitic. And Matt Walsh is like their good little dog on a collar or whatever to be like, that's the accept that's the acceptable position that you can have that's not deemed anti-Semitic because what he's part of your media company so he's not hateful but what if he went a little further and said uh you know i don't i don't like these speech laws i don't like the fact that ben shapiro and jeremy boring are falsely smearing everybody's anti-semitic because matt thinks that in his head he just doesn't want to say it out loud because the more he pushes on this topic the bigger chance he has of getting candace owens but i just think it's funny that matt walsh just covered that and now that they just keep referencing that it's like that's see we don't all agree look at that and it's like yeah, okay, that's, that's not much, but that's fine. Let's keep watching. And thus, the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. The Daily Wire is a, a publisher, not a platform. I would never call for anyone to be ousted from an actual platform, X, YouTube. I, I, even people who are, I, I think, absolutely horrific human beings, I've never called for any of them to be ousted. In fact, I've called for them to have their accounts restored if they've one thing I'll say, too, is he says uh, Matt Walsh has an isolationist theory, like America should be giving no foreign aid to anybody. The interesting part is one of the hate speech laws that I covered in my last video, it says that you're not allowed to critique Israel more than another democratic nation. So, you know, I've, I've made the analogy with Ukraine. It's like if you challenge Ukraine more than you challenge Switzerland, it's not because you hate Ukraine and it's hate speech. and You must hate all Ukrainians. That's what they do with Israel. Of course, it's the constant deflection. But it's because Ukraine is doing more right now. You, you talk about Ukraine more than other democratic nations, quote unquote, because they're doing more, not because you hate them more. So with Israel, it's like he even sneaks in there. He's like, you know, he thinks this way about every country. And, and I'm not, not saying for sure, but that's one of the hate speech laws is like as long as you view them as every other country, like if Matt Walsh just says, I don't believe in any foreign aid. But if he starts diving into that country a little bit more and being like, listen, it's not that I'm against this country. God bless them. I, you know, they have the right to survive and defend themselves. But it feels like we're getting a raw end of this deal. It's like we give the most foreign aid to them more than any other country. And in return, we get hate speech laws in America that says that we're not allowed to say, you know, challenge that country more than other countries. It feels like a infringement. It's like he he's like Matt Walsh is the acceptable line of anti-Semitism and criticism of Israel because he's an isolationist who just believes this for every other country. So I, I just noticed like the rhetoric games that are being played. I'm going to play the last clip and then I'm going to get to the real meat of my argument here. Uh, that, that's not the same thing when it comes to publishers. Publishers obviously have to decide what sort of things they wish to pay for the publication of. And uh, and when it comes to, you know, you know hosts and, and publishers, you know, parting ways, obviously there will be a non meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all. He keeps saying that like a non meeting of the minds, a non meeting of the minds. I'm not sure what he's referring to, but. You know, I think he's making the point. I don't know if it's for legal reasons or just to state it clearly where it's like we are not Twitter, which is true. They're not Facebook. They're not a platform. They're a publisher. So there's a certain message that they don't want to put out there, to be honest. And there's nothing wrong with that. I talked about it a little bit in the Jeremy Boring video. There's nothing wrong with Daily Wire drawing certain lines. But let's be clear. If you draw a certain line here, you can't say that it's anti-Semitism to say that you're drawing a line here. 
Ben Shapiro draws a certain line and then he says that it's hate speech to say that he's drawing that line. This is why Daily Wire is annoying. It's not because they just feel this way. It's because they feel this way. And then a lot of the hosts either tweet out the speech laws that say that you can't say that it's happening or cover up the speech laws and smear anybody as anti-Semitic who knows this stuff. So I want to play this clip real quick because this is the meat of the argument. It's uh, Glenn Greenwald slightly covering Ben on, I think, Dave uh, Rubin. And Ben says, you know, there's a certain Overton window, which Glenn says he used improperly, but I knew what he meant. I'm not going to criticize it. It's like the line of acceptable thought, you know, like this is the bubble of like, you can be this or this, but you can't go outside of this as Ben calls the Overton window. So I'm just going to show you how the Overton window of Daily Wire, it doesn't include the First Amendment. It doesn't include the Second Amendment. It's Israel, which is fine. If that's your line, Israel, criticism of Israel, you can't go further than Matt Walsh on Israel. You can't say this about Israel or Jewish stuff. You know, that's our line. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's like you could have whatever line you want. It's your media company. It's not mine. But just tell the truth about it. And don't say that it's hate speech when people realize that it is your line because the U.S. Constitution is not their line. The First Amendment is not their line. The Second Amendment is not their line. And I'm going to prove that in this video. That's not their line. Their line is worship of a foreign country and you know policing the criticism of it while hate speech laws are being passed in america while people like jeremy boring and ben shapiro falsely accuse people of being hateful with the same word they just say oh you must hate all people if you believe this and i saw someone tweet that today on twitter i don't know who it was but he was like you know, if you're a right winger that is critical of Israel, you have to be anti-Semitic. You know, that's what he said. I don't know if he's left wing or right wing. I don't know what race the guy is. I, it's not someone that I've ever even heard of before. But it's like this is how far the exaggerations go. It's like they just keep exaggerating and exaggerating and exaggerating, pushing further, further, further. Now it's like if you aren't agreeing with me, then you hate all of my people or you hate all these people. And it's like, OK, so you're exaggerating. And then there's hate speech laws in America being passed to basically say that it's illegal to say that you're exaggerating. And then any criticism of what's going on just means that it's like, it's so gross. It's so fake. It's so ridiculous. It's like people come in my comments and they just keep exaggerating. And I'm like, you realize that there's hate speech laws being passed in America that prevent people from suggesting that you're exaggerating. Like it's almost like a hate speech violation. No matter what you say about Israel or this or that or this or that, it's like, it must be true. And anybody who disagrees with you is hateful for sure. It's, you know, you're so honest that there needs to be hate speech laws in my country that says that you can't say that you're not telling the truth. Meanwhile, you just keep accusing everyone of anti Semitism. It's like the lack of self awareness is just stunning, stunning. But I don't know that anyone cares. It's like they can just keep pushing this stuff. But let's play this clip. And remember, disagreeing with Ben Shapiro can be deemed hate speech because he would never, he would never exaggerate you know you're not allowed to say he's exaggerating but here's the real meat of the matter when ben shapiro tries to explain what line it is that candace owens crossed and so when it comes to the host on the daily wire obviously everyone is able to say what they want nobody ever comes to me and says you can't say x nobody ever says that to walsh and no one ever said that to candace but the reality is that there is an Overton window at the Daily Wire. Obviously, there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. So there's a certain Overton window at the Daily Wire that you just can't cross, right? It's like you could stay in this bubble, but if you cross a certain line, we're going to have a meeting of the minds. Keep in mind... Elon Musk also got invited to a meeting of the minds in a foreign country, and he said something that was deemed anti-Semitic on Twitter, and I guess he had to go on an apology tour in a foreign country uh, to meet with Ben Shapiro. That's that's not weird at all, right? It's like the richest man in the world says something that they that people deem hateful, and he ha he goes and like has a meeting with Ben Shapiro in a foreign country to basically apologize to a group of religious leaders. Like, hello, it's just so obvious, but I guess people are. I don't know what it's just like knowing what's going on, I guess, is hateful or whatever. But um, let me just show you something real quick, because what is the Overton window at Daily Wire? Right. I don't care what it is. I don't care that it's a foreign country or Ben Shapiro's race or religion. I just care that they constantly smear and libel. Everyone is hateful for noticing what they're doing. So let me just point this out. This is a Jordan Peterson who works at the Daily Wire. 
This is him drooling over anti-Second Amendment propaganda for Matthew McConaughey. He tweeted out, he said, wouldn't you like to see a major politician speak like this? McConaughey nails it, right? This is in 2022. He's an employee or he's a contractor at the Daily Wire. And Jordan Peterson, who is a foolish, naive, very intelligent, but very stupid, uh, you know, I guess conservative influence. I don't know what you call Jordan Peterson, but it's like he fell for the vaccine. He cried about it. He moves to America because Canada's too liberal. Then he falls for anti Second Amendment propaganda. The dude's a mess. If they really were America first, they should deport Jordan Peterson and have him do a Zoom call from like Toronto or something because we don't need more weak conservatives in America who fall for anti Second Amendment propaganda. Matthew McConaughey is a nice guy. He's an actor. But to me, he's like a conservative plant. And I'm not saying they planted him, but it's like he wears a cowboy hat. He, he's like not left wing, but he's not right wing. And he does that uh, that speech. And the whole thing is anti Second Amendment propaganda. It's like Obama esque, like, I don't want to take your guns, but I want to take your guns. But like, we need to regulate them. But it's like, it's just anti Second Amendment rhetoric. It, no, I don't want a politician to talk like that. We already had one called Barack Obama who talked exactly like that. Um, and I don't believe that that's what the country needs as a conservative, but whatever. So it's like you have the there's a reason I'm pointing that out. Besides the fact that I think Jordan Peterson, if he can't figure out the first two amendments, should probably go back to Canada. In general, it's like, OK, so you have one of your hosts essentially pushing anti Second Amendment actor political propaganda after a tragedy to emotionally pull on his heartstrings because he's like an emotional crybaby he like he's easy to manipulate he's like a woman i'm not saying all women are manipulated but i'm just saying jordan peter they say like women can tend to be like more emotional on certain topics you know because it's like baked into who they are it's there it, it could be a superpower or a weakness you know just like both genders have strengths and cons on average jordan peterson's like a woman so he falls for that stuff the emotional heartstrings the, oh my gosh blah, blah. so the reason i'm pointing all this stuff out did Ben Shapiro have a meeting of the minds with Jordan Peterson to be like, ah, you shouldn't really be pushing like anti Second Amendment propaganda at a conservative company? No, no one cared. No one said anything. There was no meeting of the minds. There was no firing. There was no warning. It's just like, oh, yes, you know, pushing against the Second Amendment, whatever. That's fine. Just like the Republican Party, by the way, Trump banned bump stocks, the infringe on the Second Amendment. No one cares because they just put an actor in front of you, holds up a Bible or a cowboy hat. Everybody falls for it. They're at a rally, getting drunk with their friends, whatever. It's like, you know, uh, what's the Coachella called with the cowboy hats? There's a name for it. Coachella's of the rap and EDM. Stagecoach. It's like stagecoach. That's the Republican Party. It's the same thing as the left. It's just cowboy hats. That's my one. I think it's one of my best analogies. There's two events back to back in Coachella Valley. It's called Coachella and Stagecoach. Coachella is for like rappers and EDM people and, and those type of rock bands and stuff. And then the next weekend, it's called Stagecoach. And then they just have country bands. Same alcohol, same drug, same partying. You just switch like the rap gear and the Supreme jackets with the cowboy hats. And it's like, oh, that's right wing and left wing. It's like it's the same thing. And I'm not saying the music's the same, but you get it. It's like that's the Republican Party to me. So. I'm just pointing this out because the Second Amendment doesn't seem to be the Overton window that bothers Ben Shapiro, right? He's got a host who wants to infringe on it, falls for propaganda, whatever, just another day at the office. Um, what about the First Amendment, right? Freedom of speech. Don't want to be too repetitive because I just did a 35 minute video on it. Probably my best work of the year. I'd love if you went and checked it out on the anti-Semitism hate speech laws. I haven't seen anybody cover it at Daily Wire. In fact, I've told people this and I know I sound petty and I know I sound like I'm annoyed or something. And some people are like, oh, why do you keep talking about this? Because I know that I've been blacklisted for five or six years now and they'll hire people like Chris Cuomo to be false opposition. And now you have Twitter on, oh, wow, Chris Cuomo sounds so reasonable. Yeah, it's to create a fake discussion between fake left and fake right about Trump or Bobby Kennedy. And it never gets to the meat of the argument. So you're just sitting there being entertained and circusry as the politicians are scamming you on both sides, but nobody could figure it out because all the media is controlled and the media is not controlled for this reason or that reason. It's because I know not, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of these people have been blacklisting. Like if you figured out that Ben Shapiro was lying and Jeremy Boring's calling everybody anti-Semitic and Donald Trump and DeSantis and Governor Kemp and all these people are passing hate speech laws against the first amendment, violating the first amendment, they blacklist you. Behind the scenes, they start being like, yo, don't work with that guy. He's anti-Semitic. Don't work with that guy. He's anti-Semitic. Oh, Candace Owens, she's quite the anti-Semite. Oh, you heard of that person who realizes what we're doing? Oh, that's anti-Semitic. Oh, my gosh, that's anti-Semitism. And they start smearing your character behind the scenes. And when it doesn't work behind the scenes and they can't smear your character and you start getting too big, 
Then they just come out in the press. And it's not just left wing press, it's right wing press. And they call it say, anti semi, anti semi, anti semi, trying to get your sponsors not to work with you, trying to make everybody distance themselves from you so they can just have full power and full control to spew their narrative, which is completely against the First Amendment. Dave Rubin, I don't believe, believes in the First Amendment. His whole life, he's been saying, oh, we deserve the right to protest and my words aren't violence. And then when other countries are banning protests of opposition that he disagrees with, he starts cheering and celebrating because Ben Shapiro and Dave Rubin, whether they want to admit it or not, they prioritize a certain policy above the First Amendment and above the country. But it's hate speech to say that they're doing it. And I figured this out about the Republican Party. And this isn't just people of Ben and Dave's ethnicity or religion. It's also Christians. It's also Catholics. I'm sure there's atheists in the uh, Republican Party doing it too. But the second I figured this out, I started getting smeared in the press. I said, the Republican Party, their first priority is Zionism. It's above the First Amendment. It's above the Constitution. Above That's just the truth. It's like that's they'll infringe on the First Amendment for that policy. You know, all of these political commentators, their values go out the window for this policy. What they've made their whole career on goes out the window for this policy. I just noticed it. It's just like, what's the priority of the left wing? It's not safety and security and economy. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's not what I want. So I, I just figured out the rights priority. And as soon as you do that, they start smearing you behind the scenes and going, don't work with him. Don't talk to him. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then they come out on their thing and be like, I'm an anarchist. You know, people like Michael Malice, who I've never met, who I've never talked to. I know he was smearing my character behind the scenes, trying to tell people not to work with me. And then he goes out on these podcasts. He's like, I'm an, I'm a, yeah, I'm an anarchist. Oh, I believe in free speech. It's like, okay. So, you know, I'm sure you do, but whatever, you know, wow cool, edgy, whatever. Um, and then this is the type of stuff going on. So it's like Ben tweets out hate speech laws that are being passed through legislation, right? It doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going on, right? These laws are being passed against the First Amendment by every Republican. They call you hateful if you talk about it. They smear your character behind the scenes. They make press articles about you in the public. And then Ben Shapiro gets on his Twitter and doesn't say that he's against these hate speech laws. He literally tweets them word for word like he works for, you know, uh, the people writing them. And I'm not saying he does. I'm just saying in general, it's like, how do you tweet the same hate speech law word for word? Li like as if it's like gospel or something. It's like anybody who says this is anti-Semitic. It's like, wow, that just was a copy and paste essentially from the State Department definition of anti-Semitism. You're not allowed to say that any person of Ben's ethnicity or religion has loyalty to Israel. Meanwhile, his half his show is always about Israel, which is totally fine. The point that I'm trying to make here is I don't care what Ben, I don't care if he likes it more than America, the same as America, less. It, none of this stuff bothers me. Daily Wire doesn't want to platform this type of stuff. Doesn't bother me. Just tell the truth. What's your line? What's your Overton window? It's not the First Amendment. It's not the Second Amendment, as Jordan Peterson proved. It's something else. And I'm just going to play this clip again. I'll bring it back from a week or two ago. Jeremy lied through his teeth a couple months ago when he's like, we don't tell people what to say, or we, you know, we hired Candace for her opinions. And you didn't just be honest. And this is why, you know, Ben and Jeremy on Twitter, every time they log into Twitter, they're just getting ratioed, ratioed, ratioed. Everybody knows now that they're lying. Everybody knows now what they're doing. So they can't even log into Twitter without everybody saying it to them. So, and God bless them. I'm just saying, this is good. This is what happens when people wake up. And they stop playing the game of like, look at the blue haired liberal on college campus. Yeah. How, you know, wow. She's dumb. Cool. <laughs> we never heard this one before. Wow. <laughs> the blue haired liberal. Oh, my gosh. She, her hair's like blue and like 35 year old men beat a 19 year old in a debate. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Let's give them more money. Wow. It's like, what about the fact that our party is literally infringing on the First Amendment? And they're, in my view, essentially covering it up by not talking about it and smearing anybody who does talk about it. So let me just play this clip real, real quick, just to show you the double speak going on over there. But the Daily Wire is a publication, right? We publish, we curate. I pay people to speak. I'm not just a platform where everybody can kind of build their own account and say the things that they want to say. I, I pay people and I'm not going to pay people to say things that go beyond certain lines of what I believe. Why would I do that? Just a few months ago, the CEO of Daily Wire, who just said that, said, in my current capacity, I cannot fire Candace Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common since he is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people. But even if we could, we would not fire Candace because of another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our hosts, even when we disagree with them. 
Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's. Unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way, her job is secure and she is welcome at Daily Wire. So just to recap, a couple months ago, he said, our job is not to regulate speech. Our, uh, we're paying Candace for her opinions, not ours, right? That's what they said a couple months ago. Now, I pay people to speak. I'm not going to pay. That's what he says. I'm not going to pay people to say what I don't want. I'm just asking for him to be honest. Finally, the truth came out, right? They do regulate people's speech. They have certain Overton windows. You're not allowed to cross the line or they'll fire you, right? That's the truth. Candace crossed the line. They fired her. So everything they've been saying for five years is a lie. They wanted to act like they're so, oh, you know, anyone could, they, we're paying Candace for her opinions. No, you're not. You're paying Candace to be like your little puppet. But the second that she comes up with honest ideas that aren't yours and it goes against certain policies that are more important than America and the Constitution to you, then she gets cut. So it's like, just tell the truth. It's like you, everything he tweeted in that tweet that I just mentioned was a lie. And then he finally comes clean a couple months later and says, I'm not going to pay someone to disagree. So what is the line? What is the Overton window? It's not the First Amendment. It's not the Second Amendment. We all know what it is. Stop calling us hateful. Stop with the smear articles. Stop with the smear campaign. Stop with the calling everybody anti-Semites. It's obnoxious. And then it's like, I got to watch people on Twitter just constant like and this is a thing i'm willing to debate or have conversations with everybody but it's like if you're just constantly exaggerating about me in my comment section exaggerating 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 and then there's hate speech laws in america that say that you can't even say that that's an exaggeration or you're exaggerating it's like it's just annoying and then people get annoyed and and they're like why are you annoyed it's like because that's annoying because that's real like you know imagine if my ethnicity had a speech law that said you can't say that i'm exaggerating and that you can't say this about me or that or this about that country. Like, it's super annoying. It's super annoying. And Ben wants all those privileges. He wants to be a special boy, you know, and anybody that doesn't want him to be a special boy, he's going to call you an anti-Semite. That's just the truth. He doesn't debate this stuff. He can't win a debate on this stuff. I've said it since 2019 because I mean it. I'm winning a debate against Ben Shapiro on this topic. I'm winning a debate against Charlie Kirk on this topic. It's not debatable and I'm not just being cocky. It's the truth because what I'm saying is the truth and they're not being honest about it. You know, that's just a fact. It's like Jeremy saying in November, we're not paying Candace for our opinions. We're paying her for her hers lie. Uh, you know, it, we're, we allow people to disagree with us on certain topics to, to some extent, which is fine. It's just like, what is the, that line? Oh, this is your line? No, no, that's hate speech that you said that. Wait, it's hate speech that I told the truth about your line? Yes. And then you're also not going to talk about that word being passed into legislation as a hate speech law, which, it, which, which um, you know, infringes on the First Amendment? Yes. And the reason that I'm talking so much shit now is because I've been boxed out of conservative media and I don't care. I don't need them. It doesn't define me. I don't want what they want. To be honest, I don't even want to be around these people anymore. But it does bother me because they're the opposition to the Democrats and they're all fake opposition. You know what I'm saying? And with PBD as well, you know, I liked his vibe when he was coming in. I thought he was going to be authentic and I hope he still does good work. But at the end of the day, it's like you come into basically conservative media, right? As a new guy, has this ever been spoken about on PBD podcast? How come he won't let me on the podcast? How come he doesn't answer my, my text when I talk about that? I don't think they want this conversation. I believe personally that it's a blackout at conservative media on this topic. I feel like it's a concerted effort to not allow this conversation to be had. And I'm now talking about people publicly, God bless them. And it's nothing personal or nothing like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not getting grimy or slimy. I'm not gonna weigh in on Crowder and his wife and his kids, like nothing like that. Just public discussion, public conversation about things that people have said publicly. I'm not trying to be slimy at all. It's just like, how long are people going to infringe on the First Amendment? How long are they going to blacklist everybody who talks about it? How long are they going to hire fake opposition? How long are they going to have fake discussions and fake conversations and fake this and fake intellectual dark web where it's like a bunch of controlled idiots that will keep the Overton window of the intellectual discussions in a way that isn't, it's just basically like Sam Harris and people like Sam Harris sniffing their own asses, thinking that they're like Richard Dawkins or like, you know, Stephen Hawking's or something when they're not even smart or honest. It's like, or we're the intellectual dark web. Our opinions about opinions and opinions. I have opinions about opinions and discussions about discussions. And isn't this, it's like, shut up, you know, find God. 
Oh wait, that's hate speech. Now I can't tell people to find God. I forgot. They, uh, w- what's not hate speech? Telling people to get a vaccine for a donut or something. It's like, oh, if you get three vaccines, you might get a free Krispy Kreme. That's not hate speech. But telling someone to find God is is offensive. I forgot. Um, anyway, I'm gonna read a few comments. Someone said Trump was presented to you by the scripted media. There's a lot of interesting things that uh, Trump does, but at the end of the day, like. I want to make this point, too, before I read comments. If people are just fans of Trump, like you're going to get what you get and you can't complain. That's just my opinion. Like just like the left and people cry about certain races wanting reparations and this and that. And the right wing talks all tough. Like, oh, you don't thank you for the super chat, Donnie. Donnie Dingo. That's a funny name. But they talk all tough. Like, oh, you don't deserve reparations. You, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I say the same thing to Republicans like, you know, it's not just the left. Like the left isn't the reason the country is falling apart. They are a huge part of it. But the real reason is because the Republican Party is not real opposition. It's like if five people are robbing your house and, and you get three police officers to come to the scene, but they're working with the robbers like that's a huge part of the story. That's why your house got like you understand what I'm saying. That's who the Republican Party really is. So when it comes to Trump, I'm not telling people not to vote for Trump he's worth a dice roll. Like Biden's not going to help you. So you might as well vote for Trump. Like, obviously that seems like the more likely scenario to, to helping you in some ways, maybe not, but probably, but it's like, if you're just sitting there being like cheering on Ben Shapiro and, 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 and Trump and Charlie Kirk, and you're like, wow, this is like real opposition. You actually deserve to fail. You know, like you, that's, that's my opinion. At least it's like, you don't, you don't deserve all these things that you want because they're selling them out and you can't call it out. If people with the vigor that people have called out Jeremy Boring and and Matt Walsh, people like, sorry, uh, I got a little caught up, but like, do people see that because of X, right? Elon lets thousands of people back on X. Everybody's waking up just over time. Years go by, people learn new information. Once you see the truth, you, you can't unsee it. So now after five years, Jeremy Boring at the Daily Wire and Matt Walsh, their Daily Wire is probably the most popular conservative media company, or at least one of the best business models, I think. Um, And Matt Walsh is one of the biggest conservative commentators because they won't talk about this. They've become unpopular on X, right? They're not popular. They're getting ratioed on almost all of their takes. That's why Matt Walsh made the video. Obviously, my comment had a lot to do with it. But as I said in the thing, it's not like, oh, I did it. My words mean nothing if there's no one behind me. You know, if I'm just here talking to myself and like, hey, Matt, do that. No one cares. It's because thousands of people agree with me. And th- and Matt's own audience knows he's not telling the truth about it. So then Matt Walsh does a video about it. That's how easy it is to get results peacefully. They're like all these people like Tim Pool and stuff with this little beanie and whatever. And he's like, civil war, civil war. Like to me, that just sounds like fed trap, fed trap. And I know what he means. Like the left is mad at him or whatever, because his beanie's weird. And they think he's a fascist because, you know, maybe Joseph Stalin wore a beanie or something. I'm just kidding. But anyway, it's like the real civil war is internal and peaceful and legal. It's like, just stop letting these liars like Tim Pool lie to you. And then you'll get some results, you know, like that's the real revolution it's not like oh my gosh yeah it's like shut up bro you're just sitting podcasting making thousands of dollars like you're not you're not fighting anybody you know what i'm saying you're just sitting there in your little goofy beanie bunker with a bunch of smelly people just talking about politics and then yelling at them when they talk about a foreign country that you don't want to talk about but in general jokes aside it's like the real revolution is you don't have to like get up and go get set up by the feds like that doesn't do anything you know people are like i'm angry of course you are because you're lying to yourself like everything you believe is a lie like the last so you're angry because you you think the trump's fighting the rhinos and your whole worldview is fake so then you go get set up by the feds it's like that's not what you need to do obviously it's like you just need to tell these people that you know that they're lying like just telling Matt Walsh on Twitter and everybody telling Matt Walsh that they knew that he was too cowardly to talk about this made him talk about this. Imagine if people did the same thing with Donald Trump. Imagine if Donald Trump knew that his supporters knew what he's doing. Trump doesn't need to do anything different because no one cares. You know, it's like he'll be like, sell the vaccine. They'll boo for a second. He'll Lindsey Graham's on stage. People get mad and Trump's like, I'll fix you guys. Eh." And then they cheer. Like it's that easy to get results, but it it requires people having a spine and letting people know that they know. It's literally that easy. It's like they can't sell it if you don't buy it. That's the revolution. 
That's the civil. The civil war is not you going to fight Antifa in a park in Portland. That's called a Fed trap. That's called a, a proxy war that like rich people are looking down at you like these idiots think they're doing something like, you know, a real it's not like going to look at Trump. You know, it, it, these are not real revolutions. These are setups or at least just like moral, spiritual victories for people so they could say they went somewhere, you know. Even like a protest, like I, I went to anti-lockdown protest, peaceful protest, but it's like, did that do anything? I mean, maybe, but maybe not. Like, you know, it's like you don't have like sometimes pro and, and I'm not saying like protests are bad. I, I I do believe in the right to peacefully protest, but it's like a lot of protests are ego trips. People won't admit it. But when people go to protest, they want a selfie. They want to look, tell their Instagram that they did something. They want to go to the Capitol to take a selfie to show what a patriot they are. And nobody wants to admit that, but I'll even admit it. It's like, that's not why I go to protest, but of course it's good content. You know, I show up, people are like, oh, wow, you're here. You know, it's like, it's a good, it's a good little ego boost. And I'm not saying that's the only reason to do it, but like a lot of people won't admit that, that it's like, if you stand on a street with a Trump flag for two hours and then go home, nothing really changes. Like, I'm not saying to not protest peacefully, but it's like, let's just be honest with ourselves. Like, did that move the needle in any sort of tangible way? Maybe a little bit, but not as much as we all want to pretend like to social media. So, you know, that's just the point that I'm making. It's like, I think the real, the real change comes when enough people just wake up to what's going on and they just say it and they stand their ground. And it's like if, if the opposition's controlled and they're calling everybody anti-Semitic while Republicans are passing anti-Semitism speech laws, you're just as bad as a liberal because you're playing along to the people that are selling out your First Amendment and pretending to be for free speech. So there's a reason that they constantly pump out content to say, look at the left, look at the left, look at the left, because that's the only thing you like about these people that gets you to think that they're fighting those people when they literally are those people. It's very deceptive. It's very hard for people to understand, but it's like once people start saying no to Jeremy Boring, no to da Daily Wire, Matt Walsh, not like I'm trying to put them out of business or anything, God bless them, but literally like, just listen, like you guys claim to be for free speech. Matt Walsh finally made a video on this topic. I've never seen anyone else at Daily Wire make a video about it, yet they constantly smear everybody with that word that's being passed into law. If everybody woke up to that point, the Overton window would shift back in the direction of the First Amendment and Donald Trump no one's challenged him or DeSantis on the fact that he's passed these bills. And it was funny because, you know, uh, what's the chat GPT, the AI algorithm guy, Vivek, when he came out, he was like, you know, playing this game of like complimenting Trump and bad mouthing DeSantis when he was running for president or whatever. And uh, he kept saying DeSantis is passing these hate speech laws. And it's like, it's true. But but also Trump was doing has done the same thing but he never mentioned that, you know, it, like it was like this weird game where he's like, DeSantis passes these hate speech laws and Trump is so much better. And it's like, Trump has passed those same laws. If you really cared about those laws, you would mention it, but there's no backlash to these politicians because th there's always just weird like proxy wars being played. It's like DeSantis versus Trump or this person, this that person or Trump versus Biden. And no one has the foresight or insights to, to like notice that this is going on. And then when you talk about it, people construe it as like you're a rhino or you hate them. It's so wild, but in on a positive note, people are getting past that point. Like that that was like three years ago. Now, more and more people, I see it on Instagram, I see it on Twitter. And I will say this too, to the people that are concerned about actual hate, is the reason that this is dominating the comment section on virtually every post ever is I could list all the reasons. And then if we really wanna lower hate, we can try to work on this, but I don't know how many good faith actors there are for five years. This was swept under the rug. People aren't going to like it if you're passing hate speech laws for one race, one religion in one country. Um, no conservative influencer talks about this. They've blacklisted and banished everybody who knows it. And a lot of the stuff that people are talking about is true. So if you try to banish the truth, like, do you really think that it just disappears and nobody knows? Like everyone figures it out at a certain point. It's just human nature. Like you can't, you can't do these things and expect everyone to just not realize, especially with the internet and social media and alternative platforms. So that's the reason that the comment sections are being dominated by this stuff. And you see a lot of Republicans like on Twitter, they'll just be like, oh my gosh, the hate is rising. Look how much hate there is and how much anti-Semitism there is in the comments. And it's like, 
some people are hateful and they are annoying and they are trolly and they are scumbags but do we want to identify the real reason that this is everywhere now it's because you guys ignored it for five six years and you act like liberals with this topic i'll give you an example if you say something against a trans person that's rude you know a lot of i'm just going to be real a lot of right wingers are extremely rude purposely to transgender people like they're they're, they're like purposely rude they're always saying rude things right imagine if the left or not imagine it's what happens they come and they say oh you're just being hateful and what does the right say i'm not being hateful i'm just being blunt i don't care about you i'll joke you i'll mock you i'll say that you're this and that you guys are killing yourself whatever like they're the right is blunt on that topic and they don't consider it hate they just consider it the truth the same thing could be said about what they say about anti-semitism there's a lot of rude people that say blunt and, and aggressive things in the comment section that are super rude and super nasty but it's like the same thing that the right wing says about the left where it's like you do the same stuff to left wingers and you say i know i'm right i don't care how rude or nasty i'm being or mean because this is the truth and then when people do it on on this topic they just cry anti-semitism the same right wingers that are rude to the left it's like there's no self-awareness if you're going to have that energy when you talk about left-wing stuff and lgbt and black stuff then someone does the same thing with jewish or israel and you just cry hate speech you look to me like a liberal i'm not saying everyone's right or whatever but it's like it's you're starting to realize the republican party is like melting down on twitter because people are being separated from in my view the gatekeepers the grifters and the false intellects are just being exposed because they're not that smart or honest. And when they get challenged, they just cry hate. Yet if the left did that, when they talk about LGBT, they'd be like, oh yeah, of course you'd call it hate speech because I'm just speaking the truth bluntly. Okay, but your comment section is just filled with hate because why? Because you can't identify what they're talking about or have a discussion about it. You know, and, and there are people like, I'll, I'll shake my head when I read the comments. It's not like they're all amazing. Like, dude, there's a lot of people that say a lot of crap on Twitter and YouTube. And you know, I like, it's not like everyone is going to be awesome. It's just like, that's the game that's being played. Um, and I, I noticed that Republicans, can, they can't handle it. X has been, in my view, revolutionary over the last year. And I know everybody's not on there. Elon kind of let it loose a little bit and allowed people to speak more. And the gatekeeper Republicans are losing. Like Matt Walsh, is losing that battle daily wire is losing that battle anybody that doesn't know this stuff is losing that battle and the more that they lose the more they cry hate which is like a fascinating concept the same with the left it's like the more they lose the transgender sports topic the more they say you're being hateful and it's like you could say that but you can't define the whole argument this is another thing i'll say too like at the end of the day it's not what matt walsh or what anyone says about transgender sports it's about the topic right because there's going to be a lot of voices on the left on the right mean angry hateful whatever but like it, it what everyone's saying doesn't matter like what is actually happening and the truth is it, i like women's college basketball now caitlin clark is interesting right she's an anomaly she's made women's basketball interesting which she deserves an award for perhaps nobel prize but uh you know, it it doesn't mean she could beat LeBron James. So if you allow transgender athletes to play in college basketball, then Caitlin Clark, her whole reign is going to go down. I mean, she's very good, but she'd probably lose to a biologically born man. With that being said, that's the topic. It's not what everyone else is saying about it. It's the same thing with anti-Semitism and this stuff. It's like, it's not everyone saying this and that what is the truth like what's really happening that's the conversation it's not the straw man that ben shapiro makes it about this guy or this guy tweeted this crazy thing one time so everybody that is here must agree with that crazy thing like that's the games that are being played in order to sweep the whole conversation under the rug that would be like a left winger finding the hundred most hateful comments made about transgenders on twitter and being like that's what this and that's what they do they say that's what this conversation is about look at these people and it's like just because 5% of this conversation is mean and nasty. It doesn't mean you're right, you know, and that's what's going on. Uh, someone said, what could be as offensive as trans is us to our opposition? Yeah, but I don't, I mean, this is my opinion. It's like, like people are like, I want to be offensive. There's two strategies. I mean, one, I guess people want to move the Overton window back, but I don't, I think when you, I'm not saying offensive because that, that word is subjective. Like what's offensive? Someone could be offended by cheese. That doesn't mean you can't eat it, but whatever. Um, 
I just think being honest is the best method, like being nasty and like edgy. Like I, I don't, I don't think it's very necessary. I just think being honest and, and raw will solve the problem. But here's another thing too. When you're called names all the time, the only thing that could stop the power of that name is people not caring about it anymore. So, you know, if the left tries to weaponize sexism and racism and xenophobia and these words to, to make you look bad, you know, the power of those words dies down when people stop caring about it. It, it doesn't mean you can't care about racial problems, but like that word being manipulated, once you stop caring, like when the left calls you this word a thousand times, if it hurts you and bothers you, then then that's where the power comes from. If you know yourself and you know that it's not true and, and, and those words mean nothing to you, that's where I think like uh, societally the changes are made. I think that word is happening with anti-Semitism right now. They've called Trump anti-Semitic. They've called Elon Musk anti-Semitic. Ben Shapiro calls everybody anti-Semitic. Jeremy Boring calls everyone anti-Semitic. You know, everybody who opposes Israel's war is anti-Semitic. Now they say right-wingers who disagree with Israel's anti-Semitic. It's like that word is being so overused, but I'm more interested in, obviously I don't like when people smear anybody, but I'm more interested in the constitutional, like it's not what you think of it. it it's the definition. That's why I'm talking about this so much. It's, it's in law. I would even go this far, and I know this is going to bother people, but whatever. I've called Trump a communist before and Republicans a communist and people are like, oh, you're just salty or whatever. And I'm obviously he's not like a full blown communist by any means, but I do think he is like a controlled opposition communist because it's like I've read the communist manifesto, right? Not in, I'm not going to say I'm not impressed because it's a historical book, but it, to me, it doesn't read like a guy who wanted to like make things equal. It reads like a power grab. So if you read all the tenets of uh, communism, it's not to say Trump brought it to America or anything. It's been here for a while. But a lot of these things that we've accepted that have been normalized are communists. We just don't realize that they're communists because they've been here for so long. And that's how they work. It's like you move the Overton window and you make communism acceptable. And then you push it further and further and further where you get one leader that's batshit insane like a liberal. And then you get a Republican that's also in the realm of communism, but nobody realizes because they're the opposition. That's how they went over time. So it's like income tax is communist. Graduated income tax is communist. When Karl Marx and Frederick Engels or whatever his name was wrote the Communist Manifesto, they dreamed of a time where, and they would mention America specifically because I think that was the country that they wanted to subvert the most. They dreamed of a time when there was a graduated income tax. At the time, there was no income tax. And then eventually they did a flat income tax. And then eventually they did a graduated income tax. That was a tenant of the communist manifesto. They wanted to charge more and more and more depending how much you made. Now it's so normalized that people don't realize that both parties are communist. When Trump goes, I'm going to, I'm going to take the 40% and I'm going to lower it to 36, or I'm going to take the 36% class and lower it to 34 and 34 to 32%. That's all communist. Like if Karl Marx would have known, even if you told him that, the, the income tax was like 10%, 15%, 20%. He would have been like, oh, this is great. This is communism. We are so communist now. People don't even realize why is the state so powerful? Why is the government so corrupt? It's like they're taking all your money. You understand? So it's like that's how they operate. I'm not calling Trump and Republicans communists to be edgy or piss people off. It's just like when you play along to Trump versus Biden, they move the Overton window. Trump passes speech laws. Trump prints trillions of dollars. He funds big pharma. It's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just a character on the scene, whether he knows it or not, to get you to accept that this is normal. And the opposition isn't real opposition. So it's like, you know, graduated income tax is communist. Um, I would say central banks, communist, uh, printing trillions of dollars and just handing money to the pharmaceutical industry. It's not capitalism. I can call it what you want. Fascism, socialism, you know, people will cry, oh, it's not socialism. It's this, it's call it what you want. I don't really care what you label it. it it's not, it's not good. So thank you. Uh, Mail shark says I can't even watch PBD anymore because it's cringe. Listen, God bless them. It's just like there's enough Republicans out there that won't talk about anything important and they constantly have like surface level discussions. You know, it, it, it's like there's enough there's enough podcasts out there. that are like, wow, Trump's being persecuted. Wow. Look at the left. And then it's like, oh, look at the right. Like there's enough of that. It's it's not intellectually stimulating to anybody who knows what's going on. It's it's like a dumbing down, in my opinion. And that's what I said about Cuomo. I've seen clips of 
of him where he comes across as reasonable. Cuomo is a likable guy when he's being honest. You know what I'm saying? He's a, uh, you know, he's got he's got an interesting vibe to him. But it's one of these things where it's like it's to dumb down Republicans, in my opinion. It's like you get basic right wing discussion where all the PBD hosts are basically regurgitating 2019 pro Trump Trump supporter talking points. Super basic, super average, super low level, super normal. You got the false op opposition Adam guy just constantly like calling everything anti-Semitic or whatever and just like arguing with them. And then there's these like little fake fights. And then you bring in Chris Cuomo, the, the establishment Democrat, to sound more reasonable now. And now you get this discussion that lowers your IQ like 10 to 15 points because it's so basic. But you think you're getting all these, uh, oh, I got this liberal and I got this Democrat and I got these Republicans. But it's like it's all just dumbing Republicans down. It's the same thing as like Democrat media. Like it's it's just dumbing you down, dumbing you down. You know, and I, I already know, but it's like same with like the Dan Bongino types. God bless them. But it's like it's all just like yelling about China. And, you know, it's like I get it. Yeah, America, we're, we're at war, whatever. Like, but it's like the, the, the narratives and the talking points are so simplistic that if you get caught in them for months at a time, you're running circles around this game of like, oh, my gosh, the left and the, we need to get the right. But it's like the right will never do anything because it, it's not a bug. It's a feature. Same with like Speaker Mike Johnson. This is a good an, uh, example as well. Haven't talked about it in a while, but Matt Gates got Kevin McCarthy out of office, right? He was the Speaker of the House and Matt Gates led this little internal revolution to get him out. Um, I don't care. Nothing wrong with it. Matt Walt, I mean, Matt uh, Gates, sorry. He said a lot of honest stuff. I was like, sure, you know, Kevin McCarthy, he's kind of a puppet. I mean, he's doing some good things, but I like the concept of, what they're doing isn't really enough because like they're, they're they're just like kicking the can down the road, you know? So it gets rid of Kevin McCarthy. Don't care. I'm like, cool. Let's see what happens. He gets Speaker Johnson immediately. I knew this guy was just as bad, if not worse. And I started reporting on it. And people like Benny Johnson, who is like, the, you know, God bless the guy, but it's like dumbing down conservatives more than anyone else. Like dumb, 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 dumb content. You know, he's like based Chad. So he's trying to trick Republicans like they always do false opposition into thinking that he's a based Chad when he's really worse than Kevin McCarthy. And then as soon as Speaker Johnson gets in, all of a sudden, Matt Walsh starts launching a documentary about how he got rid of uh, Speaker McCarthy. And he's like, my documentary about how we got rid of him is going to premiere soon. And it's like, but the new guy's worse. I don't care that that happened. But like now you're just going to run off and sell your documentary or something like you're some sort of star like this. This is who these people are. They're not really doing anything. They're just like putting on this weird clown show. Um, someone said anomaly. You rule. Keep crushing. Best base news curator on the web. Peace, love and harmony to all reading this. Thank you, Raza. Appreciate you. Um, and it's like the 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 fake opposition of like, oh, it's Trump versus the rhinos. That's a trap. It's not saying that Trump is horrible. Like I think voting for Trump makes more sense than not voting for Trump at this point. But like living in that world is a world going nowhere. You got to get outside that world to be like, listen, this country, and I'm not saying it's ever going to happen, but like if, if you could get Thomas Massey in or Rand Paul, or people could rally behind these people that know that income tax is getting too scammy. I don't know that it'll ever go back to zero. Um, honestly, I'm pretty libertarian on taxes, but at the same time, 34%, 30%, 24%. I mean, the reason they're able to drop bombs on so many countries and fund so many proxy wars to kill Christians is because they're taking so much of our money. And that's what I believe the Ukraine and Russia wars about. You know, I think they're just killing Christians, sacrificing Christians in Ukraine and in Russia. Hundreds of thousands of Christians are going to die. And then they're going to rebuild Ukraine with BlackRock if they even can, if it doesn't lose the war too hard. I don't know what's going on exactly, but it's like, that's what our tax dollars are funding. So they, they have, and they just print money out of thin air also. But, you know, it's like, it's too much. So if we could get like a Thomas Massey in that wanted to at least lower the brackets and make them not so crazy, that would be a huge win. But we're never going to have a huge win because people just obsess over Trump and, and he's not even trying to get huge wins. Like he's just a character. So, you know, I, I've been more patient recently. It's like I, I think it's going to take four to six years for Republicans to figure this stuff out. So I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to fight with people. I'm not going to get angry. I'm just going to be patient because whether Trump wins or loses, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, honestly, it's much more interesting if Trump wins. I, I definitely think it'll be more entertaining and more 
you know, like, okay, is, is he going to actually do it? Is he not? Is he going to build the wall? Is he going to stop the wars? Is he going to fund the wars? It's going to be way more interesting if Trump wins. I hope he does. But at the, at the end of the day, um, I don't think that Republicans are going to figure stuff out, at least in mass, until like four to six years. Bill said, is Anomaly trashing all other commentators so he could become rich and famous? Well, thanks for the question, Bill. And thank you for fra framing it as a question, not a statement. No, I'm telling you, they've all been infringing on the First Amendment for five years. They've all been blacklisting people behind the scenes. I would never talk about anybody if I didn't think they were covering up for politicians who were infringing on the First Amendment. If you're too dense to figure that out and realize it's like a, if you know basketball, box out. You box somebody out when you want to get the rebound. They're boxing everybody out of conservative media who knows that Repub Republicans are being communist and passing speech laws and doing all this scumbag stuff. They're, they're purposely hiding these people and blacklisting these people and bad mouthing these people. To me, it's like controlled opposition. That's why I'm talking about it. It's because like if the left sucks and the right's doing that, but anybody who knows that they're doing that gets kicked out or boxed out, then it's like, what else am I going to do? Just sit and be like, oh, wow, Michael Knowles is really cool. It's like, he's not talented. He's not interesting. He's obedient. You know, that's how you get high in conservative media, not with talent or skills or honesty, obedience. You know, if you're not obedient, you get Candace Owens. That's what it is. You know, they're all on a leash with a nice little collar, you know, and it's like they get to pretend like they're so funny and likable. It's like cringe, snooze, snore. This is not because I want to get rich and famous off talking about them. It's because they're infringing on the First Amendment, lying about it, covering it up, never having a conversation. And they're actually starting to have conversations now. And the reason they're starting to talk about this on their show is because people are realizing that they're not. So that's the whole moving culture in the right direction is not just sitting clapping like seals for these people. It's realizing that they're covering up the most important topic of our time. In my opinion, they're passing communist speech laws. Like, what do you think a speech law is going to do to say like, and, and obviously it's for one race and one religion in one country, but in general, it's like, does any other race or religion have a, have a speech law that says you can't say that they're controlling media and banking. You can't say this, you can't say that they're priming the country to turn into Sweden or, you know, even worse or, or, or European countries where you get arrested for questioning stuff. It's like, that's what they're doing. And it's not the left doing this here. It's so funny because the left as terrible as they are, and I'll never vote for them. It's like Obama talks about infringing on the second amendment, right? He talks about it. He wants to, but then he just never figures out how Trump, he talks about saving the second amendment. And then he sells it out. Republicans pretend to believe in free speech as liberals are basically manipulating public platforms in order to take away free speech and push anti-Christian laws on all these social media platforms. You have Republicans doing the exact same thing through legislation. Like Republicans are fake opposition. They're literally talking like they're going to stop all this stuff while they're doing it. In some ways, I wouldn't vote for the Democrats, but Republicans are worse because they're fake opposition. Who's worse, the other team that you're playing against that you want to beat or your own teammates that aren't even on your team that are literally working and rigging the game against you to make sure you have 0% chance of winning? It's not 50-50 if our team is fake. It's zero. We have a 0% chance. You know, once people start waking up, now our, our percentages increase. So someone said, Trump used right-wing cover to enact left-wing policy. He definitely did, you know, and it's like uh, the reason that it get they get away with it is because they always have like a different discussion to talk about. You know, it's like, oh, Russia collusion or this person took the money from him. Like there's always this other topic t to make people not see this, you know. I, I saw it in real time on Dave Rubin's Instagram. Dave Rubin posted that he was celebrating that France was banning pro Palestine protests, not riots or violence, which is already illegal in these countries, protests. Like you can't even organize peacefully for that country. And Dave Rubin is celebrating on his, on his Instagram, right? So everybody in the comment section starts realizing like Dave is a fraud. They're like, Dave, your whole career is you doing the opposite. Now you're against free speech and free protest, like for, for, you know, 
political reasons for a country that you like that you can't even say that you like because now that's hate speech. And like everyone started realizing like his whole comments was filled with his own fans saying that he was like, wow, I didn't know you're such a hypocrite. Wow. Unfollowing like he got ratioed like 99 percent. Three days later, it's like, look at the left. And then everyone's like back on his side. Like, this is the, these are the games that these people play. It's like, oh, look at the left. Like, that's the only, oh, yeah, the left is doing things with the kids in the schools. Like, yeah, that's all bad. But like, that's the whole thing. As soon as people start realizing, they just start doing that, you know? Let me see. Someone said, I'm sick and tired of my dirty government stealing money from me. Yeah, but people just need to wake up, though. I mean, don't get that upset about it. It's definitely annoying. But, you know, if if there's no real opposition to it, not, it doesn't matter. So focus your energy peacefully, getting Republicans to figure out what's going on, because then there's actually opposition. Someone said, sad to see. I saw that. Dave declined a weakness. It's not weak though it's an ideology like these people have an ideology that supersedes the constitution but then when you notice that their ideology supersedes the constitution they just say you're being hateful and they smear you and they blacklist you and they say hey oh you're, you just hate me oh you just hate me oh you're just so hateful oh you're just so hateful it's so diabolical it's like laws to say that you can't say stuff they'll say it and then when you disagree they say that you just hate them and they use the most popular victim card ever and then people like Ben Shapiro make videos being like, it's not just the left using victim cards. It's also the right. And, and it's like, does this man have no self-awareness whatsoever? Like he's talking as if that's not him, you know, like that's someone it's so ridiculous. Like it's, it's so obvious, but, and everyone's starting to realize now. So, you know, it's an interesting time. I guess they'll just keep calling everyone hateful all the time. I, I don't see that really working, but. What are my thoughts on the rabbi Candace had on before being fired? Well, I did a whole breakdown reaction video to it. So if you if you scroll back far enough on my uh, YouTube or, or Facebook, I did a whole reaction video to it. My thoughts, my, I mean, summed up since I did a whole video on it. I understand why the hate speech laws exist and why conservative media blacklists anybody who knows what they're doing. Because in a debate, it become it becomes obvious that they're not telling the truth. So, you know, that's why you have to accuse everyone of being hateful and say it's a hate speech violation if you say that they're exaggerating or, you know, that's why they're doing what they're doing. Because like Ben Shapiro, Jeremy Boring, Matt Walt, like these people can't, it, it's not even possible for them to win a debate on this topic. Other topics, sure, it's debatable, like economy or foreign policy, like you know, I could see, you know, Ben Shapiro, or Charlie Kirk, like, it's like, I'm not going to say I could for sure win a, uh, a debate with them. I do think I'm an honest person, but like this topic, I'm not, a I'm not asking, I I'm telling you, I, I could beat any of them in a debate because they're just lying. So this is why they blacklist, censor, call everybody anti-Semitic, and then say that you hate them. If you notice what's going on is because when these discussions are come to light, like Candace Owens talking to that guy, it becomes obvious what's going on. And once it becomes obvious what's going on, everybody just accuses you of being hateful. So it's like having a two hour discussion and a podcast. It's the same reason that you don't see a lot. Remember during COVID, all these weirdo journalists that were like pushing vaccine mandates and forced masking. How come they never did a two hour podcast on it? Because they look like idiots. You know, when Peter Hotez went on uh, Joe Rogan, he looked like a fool. You know, he, he embarrassed himself in front of the whole world and everybody knew he was lying. So it's like, you know, if you're not an honest person and you're not leading with truth and morality and you're a total hypocrite on the First Amendment and you're a conservative who pretends to believe this but says it's hate speech when people realize that you don't, it's not possible for you to win a debate with somebody that's more honest. So that's where the blacklisting, the censoring and the false accusations come in. Imagine if I never had to debate anyone on this topic and I just called everyone hateful all the time. Like someone proved me wrong. I'm like, oh, you just hate me because of my race. Oh, you just hate me because of my religion. Oh, you just hate me. Oh, you can't say that I'm exaggerating. That's illegal. Oh my gosh, I need hate speech laws. Oh my gosh, you're being so hateful. Oh my gosh, anybody like, it, it's like, it's just like, that's, it's just so annoying, you know? And then it's like, if you say that it's annoying, that's also hate speech. It, it's like, it's just so obvious, but apparently people aren't smart enough to figure it out. So it just keeps going on. 
What like people don't get that? Like, why would Christy Noem, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, G Governor Youngkin, I can name like 10 more Republicans. Why are they all passing the same phrases into law as a hate speech law? They all came to the same conclusion. They all figured out like, no, there, there's a definition that's being given to them that they're passing the law. There, there's no way they're all going to pick the same definition from the same organization to pass into legislation as a law. And Ron DeSantis already passed it two times. And then he recently just passed it again a month ago to define it into law as if it wasn't clear already. This is the law of Florida. This is what the word means in law. One day, if the Supreme Court's not sold out, it's going to be deemed unconstitutional. It already is unconstitutional, in my opinion, but Republicans don't care. There's no opposition to it. The Democrats don't care. Republicans don't care. It's it's so obvious. And people will say, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's just a small thing. It's like, I'll say this. I don't know if the timing is uh, coincidental or not, but I realized because in 2018, I thought Republicans were pro-free speech. I showed in my last video, if you want to watch it, I figured this out in 2019 that everything is fake. And I seemed like a maniac. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're all lying. No safe space documentary. Like the whole no safe spaces documentary was a cover for the fact that Republicans were doing that. It came out at the same time. Ben Shapiro is tweeting the exact phrases that are being passed in the law and nobody's talking about it. And as soon as I started talking about it, they started blacklisting me and my friends were telling me that I was being smeared at, at media organizations. And I was like, oh my gosh, the whole party's a lie. Like, everything's a lie. Everything that I thought that they were doing isn't just kind of not happening. It's all not happening. It's all fake. And everyone just thought I was being mean or hateful. And then six months later, the country shut down. So it's like, this is not directly related, but I do believe if you allow Republicans to give up the first amendment and you're not smart enough or honest enough to call it out, you don't have a country anymore. Like they gave up the first amendment in 2019 and in 2020, we're locked in our houses and they're doing 15 days to slow the spread. I don't think it's a coincidence. That's the Overton window going so far. It's like a shit test. It's like, okay, let's infringe on the First Amendment and see if Republicans are too stupid to figure out that we're doing it. Oh, they are? All right. Well, if they're too stupid to figure that out, what else won't they figure out? And that's like a 15 days to slow the spread. It's like, let's see how weak and pathetic everybody is. And it's like, oh, that was, that was way easier than I thought. I thought there'd be more opposition, but... Apparently, our, our party is too fake and stupid to figure this out. Like, I, it's not a coincidence in my view. Just like it's not, I'm not saying that they're directly related because you're not allowed to say that on YouTube. But, you know, the executive order that Trump passed for a universal flu vaccine that brought together like seven different parts of government, it brought together like, I could look up exactly actually here. I'll just read it, read it aloud real quick. Universal flu vaccine executive order Trump. He passed this in 2019. Um, let me read it real quick. It brought together the Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Veteran Affairs, the Department of Homeland Security, the Food and Drug Administration, the CDC, the NIH, the Center of Medicare and Medicaid, the Biomedical Advanced Research Development and Authority, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to ten different, it brought together ten different departments in government to form a quote unquote task force, a task force of 10 government agencies. And then six months later, everybody knows what happened. These things are not coincidental. It's like a shit test, you know? They, they do these things, in my view, and it's like, oh, nobody, nobody knows that we're doing it. Like, really? It's like, they're probably sitting in their offices thinking like, are Republicans really this stupid? They pretend to believe in free speech, yet they don't even notice that we're doing this. They pretend like it's like, oh, it's it's too easy with the two party system. So. Uh, let me see. Remember when Democrats oppose the vax, the mind control is crazy. Yeah, but here's what it does when Democrats uh, disagree with the vax. And this is like I'm not going to say I don't know if it's because people are dumb or they're just dishonest, but. The low IQ Republican commentators, here's what they'll do. Well, the left used to disagree with the Vax. Now they agree. Like they're always playing this opposite game where they're like, remember when you were being a hypocrite? Like they, they have no original thoughts of their own. Like they can't do reporting on what's really going on. So they just are like, you should like the vaccine because you pretended to just hate it because Trump did it. And it forces Republicans to defend the vaccine, which a lot of them did, where it's like, 
that's not the real story of what's going on. It's not left and right. And what Kamala Harris says, where it's like they pretended to oppose the vaccine. And then that got Republicans to defend the vaccine. And then when they flipped it, Democrats still got the vaccine. It's not like they remembered what they said seven months ago. So there's, there's no point of even really like making that a big talking point, but that's like all Republican influencers can do. They're like, look at Kamala Harris was, was, was against the vaccine and now she's for it. It's like, yeah. So, so, okay. Yeah. They lied. Like they always lie, which is like worth pointing out. It's not saying you shouldn't point it out, but it, you know, they know how to force Republicans hands. Like I know how to force Republican hands. It's, it's easy. Like if I can own a media company, like the Republicans are obvious, like here's the story. And then they, they chase it like a dog with their tongue out for five months, you know? And then like, it's just like, just give them a surface level, basic, like left, right paradigm story. And they'll all jump on it like a dog on a tennis ball. Someone said solutions would be great. The solution is to not play along and figure it out. And I just demonstrated that I'm one person, thanks to the help of many people that are knows what's going on, because I couldn't have done it alone. But in general, I just got one of the biggest commentators in Republican media to cover an anti First Amendment unconstitutional law that's been passed through for five years. I just did that last week. I'm changing the discourse of conservative media, not by myself because I couldn't have done it, but I don't really have much help when it comes to influencers. So it's like, that is the solution. Like how much more obvious could it get? I, I'm not trying to be mean, but like people always, they're like, what's, I, I don't want to hear this. Of course you don't, but that is the solution politically. Personally, it has nothing to do with this stuff. I mean, you know, that doesn't make you a good person. But in general, that is the solution. Everything I'm saying is the solution. But people who don't want to hear this as a solution, they just spiral because they want to be a cheerleader. And this is the truth that anything in life, if you're a cheerleader, you get what you get. You don't get to make decisions. You don't get to influence stuff. You just you're just a fan. You know what I'm saying? And like it. So if, if you hear what I'm saying and don't get inspired and, and, and it makes you feel bad and you don't think this is a solution, when I just told you the solution, like, you know, that's between you and yourself. Like you gotta stop lying to yourself. It's so it's, it's like, I'll like say a solution for five minutes. People are like, oh, a solution would be nice right now. I'm telling you the solution. Stop playing along. Let people like Daily Wire and Trump know that you know what they're do doing and then they can't do it anymore. If you don't ever let them know and you constantly just deflect to the left and buy into these stories, it's never going to stop. That's the solution. It's like so clear. Why do I don't understand? I do understand actually because I'm good at like psychology, but like I say the solution and people that don't want to hear that pretend like I never said it and then act like I'm not giving a solution because they don't want to hear the solution. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like such a weird game, you know? It's like if you're watching like Rachel Maddow every day and you're like, yo, mom, stop watching Rachel Maddow. And she's like, no. And then you're like, what else am I supposed to do with my time? It's like, you know, it's like that's the vibe that people are. Getting. It's like, what else am I supposed to do? I wore a hat and I showed up. I, it's like, that's not enough. It's, it's like, not really, but. Someone said when the Democrats disagree with the Vax, they call them anti-science. Here's the game that they were playing too. Like people don't realize this because Trump is such a good like politician, but Trump talked about all the alternative medic medications, right? He talked about, I'm not going to name them. I don't know if you're allowed to, but you know, hydroxy blank blank and I, I, Iver blank. Like I'm doing it for the algorithm because they have these weird like AI bots that'll scan your videos. But I think you could talk about it now, but whatever. I'm not advocating for the medicine because to be honest, I'm not like a pharmaceutical pill popper, but in general, um, you know, Trump was advocating for alternative medicine and then he stopped. People don't get this because they see everything left or right or Trump versus them. Why? Uh, I've said it before, but why do people think that Trump stopped once the vaccine came out? Trump never mentioned those medications again. Never. He was mentioning them all the time. Why do you think Trump did that and then halted completely once the vaccine came out? Because once it came out, you never heard him talk about those medications again. He literally just sold vaccines for four years straight. Why? Let's see in the comments. There's two reasons. Um, someone said playing both sides. Uh, he got paid. I'm just going to read a few, then I'm going to tell you. Money. All right, so there's something called the PREP Act. And in the PREP Act, 
if there's any medication that's known to work, then you can't use the emergency use authorization. I think it's in the EUA, actually, not the PrEP Act. So with the emergency use authorization, in order to get the vaccine so out so fast, it wasn't going through normal standards. They needed like an emergency to do it. But in that EUA, if there was one of those medications that was proven to work, you can't rush out the vaccine. It's not legal. In order for it to be legal, you can't have any safer or more known thing that's there that works because then you can't rush it out. So it's like once they probably told him like, yo, you got to stop with that or, or the vaccine won't work. He stopped. Also, I think he wanted to keep deaths down because it looked bad on him. Everything Trump does, not everything, but most things, it's not for you. It's not for this. It's for him. He wanted to rush the vaccine out. Listen to him in interviews. It's not hard to figure this out. He wanted to rush the vaccine out because it's good for him. It looks like he did it. Every interview, he says, I did it. Not Fauci, not Biden. I did it. I did it. I did it. It was me. It wasn't Biden. It was me. It's my vaccine. I got it out. They tried to suppress me. The FDA tried to stop me to, to, to do the election. They didn't want it to come out before the election. Trump doesn't give a shit about you. He just wants credit for the vaccine. Everything is done. Talks about alternative medication to lower the death rate to make himself look better. As soon as the vaccine comes out, he stops talking about the alternative medication because he never gave a shit about you. He wanted to keep the deaths down to look good on him. Now that the vaccine's out, he stops talking about it because he knows the vaccine can't be rushed to the public unless he stops talking about those because if those go through, the vaccine can't go through. He rushes it through the FDA, tries to push Fauci, everybody to get it out earlier, not to help you or save the world because he wants credit for it. He doesn't want Biden to get credit for it and have them wait a few months and then give Joe Biden credit. It's like everything he does is through that lens, but people don't realize that. Um, JK said, have you researched the bill the World Health Organization is trying to pass through Congress with regards to the pandemic treaty? The bill is insane and no one mentions it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, I have seen it, but I don't think it's being passed in America. I do know that they are working on it, but here's the fact check and then what I believe is happening. The fact checkers say on Twitter, they say, and like everywhere, they're like on Facebook, they'll say fact check, the World Health Organization pandemic treaty is not being passed into US law, which is true. It's not being passed in America. However, social media companies can abide by those rules. This is where the fact checkers are lying. Like the Facebook and YouTube, they would block your video if you disagreed with the who. They'd be like, the World Health Organization is our ultimate authority. So if, I don't know that this is gonna happen, but as, as you're saying, Jay, if the World Health Organization passes these new set of pandemic rules, they'll pretend like they're not being passed into law in America, but social media companies will abide by them. And a governor could possibly pass them through law too and do the same thing they're doing with the anti-Semitism speech laws, which is like, just copy and paste the wording and put it in a bill. So anything's possible, but you know, I just noticed that they were fact checking all the posts and they're like, this isn't being passed into legislation. And it's like, maybe not, but, one doesn't mean it can't happen in the future. And also, if all social media companies <clears throat> besides Twitter abide by those rules, then it, it almost like supersedes the Constitution. Uh, let me see. Someone said my wife is a doctor. Uh, are, you, are you talking about Ben Shapiro? RFK Jr. has proven he will stand up to these kinds of powers. Not really, though, because he already caved like everyone else caved, and he allowed his wife to do a, vac a, a vaccine mandate party during the pandemic. So I don't, I think he would make a good FDA or HHS, but RFK is not running a real presidential campaign. He's not going to win. He's not going to come close. He's not running to win. So I'm not sure what he's doing, but it's whatever. Someone said Trump Trump brags about pushing the FDA. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to revisit this because it's like the most exhausting topic, but people that are obsessed with Trump, then they have to make a theory as to why he did it. You know, this is why Republicans are where they are, because if Trump does something that's super horrible, super evil, super corrupt, super bad for everybody, Republicans can't admit that he did that. So they have to like make up a new theory in their head, which is like borderline insane to be like, oh, he rushed the FDA to save the world from lockdowns for three years. And it's like the vaccine didn't stop the lockdown. There were lockdowns after the vaccine. There were mandates after the vaccine. 
Um, Democrats were still pushing them. So it, that they told you that the vaccine would stop the mandate in order to get people vaccinated. It was a marketing tactic. It's like, oh, if you get the vaccine, you'll get this, this, and this back. But it didn't coincide completely with the with the freedoms coming back anywhere. So it's like, this is why Republicans are useless. Like they don't know anything. You know, I'm not saying everybody, but it's like they everything they do is through the lens of like the left or what Trump they wish happened. And it's like the opposition is so watered down. You know, I, I think it's going to take a couple of years, honestly. And I, I do see that people have woken up over the last year. So it's already happening. I'm not really concerned with it. Like at a certain point, I'm not going to say with everyone because some people definitely will lie to themselves. But in politics, it's like when you become concerned, like most people, they don't go from conservative to liberal. Like it does happen. Like Joe Walsh pretends to do that or whatever. But you don't you don't very rarely see or you very rarely see someone that like goes conservative to like super liberal. I, I've noticed that women tend to do it more than men. Like if you're a man and you were liberal and then you realize conservatives were mostly right it's very like very rare that you go back to being a liberal unless you're like an egomaniac or something like Joe Walsh, but women they'll be on TikTok. I've just noticed this, that I've known women that they're, they're annoyed with Republicans. Understandably Republican men tend to be not whatever, but it's like, they'll go back to being liberal sometimes more than men on average. But it's like with the information I'm saying, most people, once they figure out what I'm talking about, they're never going to go back because once you see everything through the lens of what I'm saying, everything seems fake because it is fake, you know, like, so I'm not really stressing about these topics because I think that more and more people have woken up and, and they've made it their whole, their whole activism because they're so, they feel so betrayed. They're like, wait, Republicans have been scamming me all along. They're passing hate speech laws they're lying about this. Like I, you know, they're taking away my first amendment. It's naturally already happening. Um, ZK said, why do guys tune into this live stream? Every time it's the same thing, both sides are wrong, blah, 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 no solutions. You sound very, very beta. Um, you're like, here's the funny part. Why do people tune into this live stream? You're literally here. So it's like you're talking to everybody as if they're not you're like, oh, why are people here? It's it's like going to a party and you're like, you've been dancing for like an hour and you're like, yo, why are people dancing at this party? They're like, you're doing that. Yeah, but but I'm different. There's no solutions here. And it's like, I've said the solution five times. It's just beta guys that don't want to, or I don't know what you are because you're just letters. You could be like a transgendered midget you know basketball player who could dunk you know that's in a circus or something but in general it's like okay that is the solution though like people that think oh i just gotta believe this and that's the like it's not the solution i don't i, I don't feel like repeating myself because i'm even boring myself like people that have listened to me for a while they're gonna it's like how many times does he have to say what he thinks the solution is like it's it is loser behavior you're right someone said it's loser behavior it's like look how look how quickly i got and, and it's not just it, it's like a it's a culmination of things like candace owens was brave she went too far according to Ben Shapiro and his meeting of the minds or whatever he calls it. <laughs> Is that the same meeting of the minds that uh, Elon Musk had to go to for his apology tour? Anyway, um, you know, Candace Owens is brave. It creates a lot of backlash for Daily Wire. So then Daily Wire starts talking about these topics. Do you think Matt Walsh just randomly covered this for the first time in his career now? They've been passing these for five years and he just noticed now he noticed because his audience made him notice his audience made him feel like he was the coward that he's been on this topic. He knows his leash at Daily Wire, whether he wants to admit it or not. I believe that Matt Walsh has opinions and beliefs that he won't say because he knows that it, like they, they've made it very clear. This is our Overton window. Matt, what you're saying now, that's the limit. So if he ever goes further, like he probably wants to do, because the truth is the truth, he'll get fired. So it's like he made this video because people realized it's the same thing with Trump and Republicans, like the betas and all the loser men, they start crying when you say this. They're like, oh, there's no solution. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> uh, there's no solutions here. <laughs> it's like, that's like loser vibes. You know, it's like, 
the solution is like I just showed you how you could be successful on a small scale or a big scale, whatever you consider it. With Trump and the GOP, it's the same thing. The only reason they get away with it because a bunch of loser beta guys just cry when like people bring up the truth. Like, like, oh, the truth? Oh, no. How am I supposed to drink my beer and watch my Sean Hannity? Who is to do it my Sean Hannity? I've been watching it. It's like, ugh. So it's that. It's just like it's that easy to get results. You just got to stop being so weak. I used to say years ago, I stopped saying because I just moved on to greener pastures. But Trump looks at his audience and he just sees a bunch of doormats because a bunch of these men act like doormats. They they they're like. They're like Taylor Swift fans. Like Trump walks past them. He goes, YMCA. And they literally just piss their pants and take a selfie. They're like, look, I just pissed my pants in front of Trump. And they're like, dude, look at my wife. She, she's next to me. And we, I, we pissed our pants. It's like, you know, that's like Trump. He looks at his audience like doormats because they are doormats. I'm not saying you can't like them or support them. But it's like if Trump passes an anti-First Amendment speech law and you just sit there peeing your pants in excitement, Trump's like... He probably thinks you guys are like animals. You know, he's like, it's a bunch of dogs out there, you know, like loyal animals. Like, it's like if you act like an animal, they'll treat you like animals, you know. 15 days of slow, the spread was animal treatment for humanity. If you act pathetic, you get treated pathetic. So it's like all it takes is people to not be pathetic, but they don't want to be. They think not being pathetic is like posting about the left all the time. It's like if your party's doing all these things and you can't call it out, they're not going to stop doing it because they don't look at you. They don't respect you. I don't think Trump, he doesn't need to respect his audience because they don't even respect themselves. Like, you know, if everyone came together and was like, don't say, don't do that, he wouldn't do it. But everyone just lets him get away with everything. Um, hey, those doormats are patriots. Sure. But, you know. People are still wearing their dog cones. Well, left wingers are a different type of animal like they're it's it's crazy what they're doing they're like they're still wearing these things unreal but that is my opinion of the solution like it's like it's so simple but people don't want to do it so it's so whatever someone said rfk jr is evil and his vp is a soros back candidate yeah i'm not thrilled with his vp choice but i, I already like I already gave up on RFK's political campaign when I saw the people he was parading around with. It's like, it, it's pretty clear who, who he's going to be, but his, it's not a real campaign. If he ran as a Democrat and was the Democrat nominee, it's a real campaign running independent against Donald Trump in this election is not real. Like it, I don't, don't understand. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to talk on this stuff that much. Cause then I just sound like I'm being a hater, but like, I don't understand people that fake run for president. Like, do they need to sell books? Do they want attention? Are they trying to move the Overton window or they, like, I, I don't, you know, there's, it could be a noble thing, but I don't, I, it, he's not really doing anything like unless he, uh, you know, maybe he gets a position in Trump's cabinet. I'm not really sure. I will be proven wrong on what? CL, what do you think I'll be proven wrong on? I hope so. I hope it's something good. Anytime good things happen. It's, uh let's see someone said i'd rather be a patriot than anunnaki <laughs> okay i don't i don't i don't is that was that is that the two options now you're either a patriot or you're anunnaki <laughs> uh, maybe i missed that one but let me see he wouldn't have a chance that he's running as a dem just like he doesn't have a chance now yeah i don't know i i think it sucks because it's like people are gen generally trusting you know, like, like RFK has done a lot of good work. He's a very likable guy. I like him, but it's like, you know, once people do certain things, that's you not being a doormat. Like I saw who RFK was hanging out with, who he's parading around. And it happened to be people that were lying about me and trying to smear my character and, and falsely label me. So once I see that, it's like his campaign is done to me. It's like, okay, that he's just another, and like, and then I watch how he shilled so hard and bent the knee on a topic. And it's just like, you know, it, it's not for me, but in general, I would say this, people are good people and they're trusting. So they let politicians get away with a lot of stuff. This is what I'll say. 
I'm a news host, right? Every time I go live, every video I do, every breakdown I do, I'm earning your trust. If I ever do stuff that's weird, that's like totally off base. And this is all perception too, because a lot of people do feel this way. They're like, oh, Anomaly turned on Trump. He did this. But if you actually listen to what I'm saying, I understand I'm not going to please everybody and that's earth. But if people have listened to what I've said, a lot of stuff I've said has aged very well. What I said in 2019 is becoming a mainstream talking point now. Everything I said in 2020 about Trump and the vaccine became DeSantis's entire campaign, but nobody seemed to say it when it actually mattered. And it was true then. But in, in general, it's like, I understand I'm not going to please everybody, but you shouldn't just blindly trust me. Like, you know, I'm earning your trust and respect every time I do a video. If I do like, that's why with like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro, it's like, it's not to say that like they don't do anything right, but the biggest moment of our time was the lockdown and the vaccines and the forced masking. And it's like, if you're too stupid or fake to, to see through that and you're wrong on these topics for like years, I'm not, I'm just not that impressed. It doesn't mean I like hate you, but it's like, I don't go to these people for advice. If Jordan Peterson can't even like help himself from moving to America and then posting like anti second amendment propaganda after he cried about he was like, oh, I thought I was going to get my freedom for getting the vaccine. You're stupid then, bro. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're two years behind me. Like, that. you thought that? Why? Why did you think that? Like, why? you thought you were going to get three vaccines in your arm against your will, and then you were going to get all the goodies from the government? Like, it's like them luring you into a gulag and being like, oh, I thought this gulag was a basketball gym. It's like, okay, so you're dumb? Like, whatever. I'm not trying to be rude, but... In general, it's like once people show you who they are, it's not your responsibility to gaslight yourself into thinking it's so different. And I'm a news analyst, so it's like I'm analyzing the news. Every time I go live, every report, I'm earning your trust and respect. And if I ever do things to lose that, you shouldn't like who you thought I was. You should just like notice what I did and just be honest with yourself about it. You don't have to hate me, but that's just the truth. And this is news. This is YouTube videos. I'm you're talking about politics, RFK, Trump. These people are politicians. They're taking donor money, hundreds of millions of dollars. Like they're taking money to, to sacrifice certain things and hope that you never know or call them out on it. So that's like quote unquote democracy. I know it's not really that, but you know, a, a healthy country is people who notice the system. Like if I start selling vaccines on my YouTube channel because I did a deal with Pfizer. Your job is not to gaslight yourself into pretending like it never happened. It did happen. You should notice why. And if you did enough, you know, uh, peaceful backlash, then I would stop, probably stop selling vaccines because it wouldn't be profitable for me. So it's like, you know, people are too nice with politicians like RFK, Trump. Everybody wants a, they want to like fanboy and they, they don't understand how the system works. Like Trump didn't sell vaccines because he got tricked. He, he, he's part of it. You know, RFK isn't a hypocrite on certain topics. He didn't apologize on going his little apology tour for no reason. He's just doing what politicians do. He's a politician now. He's just playing the game. You know, he'll say some things that you like. He'll say some things that they like. He'll do this. He'll do that. His donor, vice president, this, that, but this and that. And it's like, it's all politics. So it's not to say that you have to hate these people, but notice what they're doing or else you're just a doormat. You know, that's the truth of it is like they get away with this stuff. Cause, cause people don't realize that they're, that they're doing it. And everybody's like way too trusting. If I ran for president and I went on an apology tour for, for, for a week, and then my foreign policy just mysteriously didn't add up for one country that everybody simultaneously agrees with that are, have spat, speech laws being passed for them. Yet you never talk about them. It's not it, like RFK is just the same. He's not like a revolutionary in any sort of way. He's not standing up to these things. He's just like playing the game, you know, to a little bit more with pharmaceutical criticism. Like, so it's not to say that I like hate him or anything, but people that are like, Oh, RFK, his campaign is so real. It's, it's really not though. I like him, but like, he's not going to win. It doesn't even make sense that he's running independent. He's not going to get enough votes. Like what's he doing? I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but I guess he's just tricking people into like thinking he's a hero when he's literally doing nothing. Like, if he really wanted to make a change, I think he could, you know, get behind a campaign, lobby his power to Trump or Biden, but I'd rather Trump personally, and get in HHS or FDA, 
because RFK after this election is going to have no power. You know, he's going to have no systemic power, no, no agencies. He's not going to win. But if he were the HHS or FDA director, now he has actual agency power to change the country. I don't think he wants to change the country. If he went to Trump and said, I want to be the head of the HHS. I want to change everything I'm talking about. You know, let me be in this and I'll bring my audience to you. Trump wins the election by 10 points. RFK is the HHS director. He can do everything he talks about. Him, his opinion means nothing now besides changing uh, public policy because he's not going to win. You know, like, so I'm just being pragmatic here. It's people just love to like, uh, I guess like idolize politicians and just like, it's like a sports game where they think they're really doing something, but they're really not. So I, that's just my opinion, but I, yeah, I don't, when they do stuff and they show you who they are, it's not to say hate them or be mean, but they're politicians. Like if I run for office and I'm getting millions of dollars from donors and I'm selling vaccines or I'm going on apology tours, or I'm doing this or that, and I'm hiring this person, like it's not your job as an American voter and citizen to be like, I just blindly trust him. It's your job to use your soul and spirit to be like, nah, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge that a little bit. That's what Vivek and I know RFK does well is they, they, ha they, they handle scrutiny well and they definitely like go into the fire and, you know, challenge their opinions, which I respect. I, I appreciate that. You know, I want to watch RFK on Dave Smith. I think that would probably be a good watch. I haven't seen it, but Dave Smith is a very ethical guy who will challenge RFK. Uh, I've heard RFK talk on certain topics and I'm just like, you know, he's slowly morphing into like a politician in my view, but appreciate you guys. God bless you. Uh, you know, overall, I know I've said this a while ago and it's, it's been a while, but this Matt Walsh response showed me that it is possible to get people to notice certain things and talk about them. If enough people care, that is my solution politically, personally, I think Personal solutions have nothing to do with like politics. Like it's about you and how you take care of yourself and what you do in your real life. But politically, it's like just being a fan of a politician. Like it doesn't really do anything. I know it's like it's it's almost as bad as being liberal because you're just like going along for the ride. You know, a real change I think comes when people realize what their party and their people are doing. And once people point it out, that's what moves the Overton window. Republicans are like professional controlled op. The liberals move the Overton window further and further towards crazy and insane. And all they do is like defend against it and play along. And then Ron or Romney McDaniels tweeting like, hey, like happy gay day, you know? And it's like, I'm just being honest. It's like, all they do is they're like fake opposition. They let the Overton window slide further and further and further. And then they just are there along for the ride to like slightly defend opinions while letting it slide that way. The only way is to like slide it back towards normality and have conversations outside of the scope of what they want you to do. So that is my solution is for people to realize what Trump and Daily Wire said are, aren't doing and aren't saying and where they're being inconsistent and sneaky and just respectfully, peacefully call it out and just let them know that you know, and then it all stops. It's really that simple. Like the, this is all changing in conservative media now. And it was all sparked by Candace Owens just being brave and even though it was about different topics, technically, it's brought up these conversations about the First Amendment and speech laws that were swept under the rug for five years. Like it's a it's a beautiful time to show that people can make change, but they can't just like run with the cat and the laser pointer and like follow, you know, every little media trick. That's my opinion, obviously. Uh, that is my solution politically and agree or disagree. That's, I, <laughs> I can't listen to people be like, what's your solution? It's like, I just said it, but appreciate you guys. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. I'll be back later this week and let me know in the comments. If you guys like those long videos I did, it takes a lot of time and labor, but you know, if it pays off and it, and people like it and it does well and it, and it, and it's more important than what I'm doing, I'll do less live stream and do more of those. Cause I do think they're more digestible um, I just haven't seen, sometimes I do those videos and no one cares. And then other times I do it like this time and, and a lot of people watch it. So it's not that like, I'm only going to do what I think is popular, but it's just like a time thing. I only have so much time. And if I'm doing things that don't translate to people caring or, or, or sharing or, or the message isn't like resonating, then I end up just doing a lot of live streams cause it's easier and more fun. But, uh, you know, the last video did well. And if, if those videos continue to do well, I'll get back to that. Cause honestly,
I like doing this more. It's easier, but I do think my more effective journalism is when I do video compilations and just make it so obvious. Like when I go on here, people are like, what are you talking about? But when I break it down and make those videos, like it's like that, I'm, I, that's my best work. I mean, I know that, I know that that's the best work that I do and all these live streams are cool and they're funny. And I think my personality comes out more, but it's not as effective. So I'll, I'll do more of those other videos if people like it. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. Have a beautiful day and I'll be back with more videos soon. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Just a few ways to stay in touch and support if you'd like to. The first way is dreamrare.com. We have blue beanies, black beanies, pink hats, other colored hats, freedom versus tyranny shirts, stay blessed long sleeve, God is great long sleeve, and lots of more cool items coming soon. Dreamrare.com. Check out the shop to support. Everything's made in the United States. Handpicked by me. Patreon.com slash rare talk for $5 a month. You can help support me. Support the show. If you haven't noticed, unlike other channels, I don't work with very many sponsors, sometimes none at all. And part of the way I'm able to do that